Yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Uh, we'll get rolling. This is the Acquia Podcast. In real time, we are um, basically in the middle of the second week after DrupalCon Amsterdam. I was spreading the good word about Drupal and open source last week um, at a government event, which I really enjoyed, but we didn't have the chance to do our post-mortem yet. Chris, how was your DrupalCon this time? It was pretty great, actually. Um, tons of great things going on. Uh, had a really good speaker experience for myself, got lots of sprinting done, made lots of really great progress on a, on a whole bunch of things and saw a lot of really great sessions. So it was, it was fantastic. Wow, that does sound good. Mine was, mine was great. I think the whole atmosphere of the con, you know, with the Drupal 8 Beta 1 coming out, um, there, was a, there was a really, really positive energy there. Yeah, I thought so too. And I think the sprints really showed that as well. Oh yeah, and um, yeah. So so so, did you catch the podcast I released last week? Actually, Chris, uh, I didn't get a chance to yet. I've actually uh, been neck deep in watching more sessions from DrupalCon. So well, I, oh yeah, well we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. So so my kids actually had a day off from school, so they came to the trivia night and they came to the sprint day, and the incredible incredible mentoring team that we have on on at those events took them under their wing. My daughter decided that she wanted to contribute, but she decided walking to the venue. Um, and within about five minutes of us getting there, two different people had uh, loaned her a laptop and um, um, a whole bunch of great people helped them out all day. And she was working on her Drupal 8 site and she found an actual bug. So she's a contributor to Drupal 8. She, she filed that, and um, my son was working on some CSS with Ruben Tejero. So, so uh, yeah, it was, um, it, was a, it was like a family DrupalCon for me, too. And the sprint was, was amazing, and my kids being there was, was, uh, was, was really cool, actually. That's totally awesome. <laughs> so speaking of neck deep in catching up on sessions, uh, you and I are both relatively busy at uh, events like this, and I'm always grateful for the events like DrupalCon where there are videos of pretty much everything. And um, you and I were talking about going through sort of the top 10 uh, sessions or things that people should catch up on if they haven't uh, seen or heard them yet. Let's jump right into our list, OK? Sounds good. Yeah. So for anyone who's not a friend of getting out of bed early in the morning, every Tuesday at DrupalCon at 8 a.m. for the last 10 DrupalCons, I think. Um, there has been this thing that we now call the pre-note, and it's the sort of welcome to DrupalCon. It, it, originally, uh, the idea was to give people some tips and some ground rules into how to get the most out of DrupalCon. In, in the meantime, it's kind of turned into a show, and it's it's also a very idealistic place, and we give messages about um, uh, contribution and how to be part of the Drupal community and, and how open source works and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so Robert and Douglas and I do this thing. And this year, the theme was memories. And um, Rob had a great idea, actually. He kind of, a couple weeks before the con, asked uh, very publicly, uh, for people to submit their stories about how DrupalCon changed their life. And in the end, I don't even know how many people we had on stage. It was crazy. But we had, I mean, maybe 20, 24 people on stage and a bunch of people who'd record, recorded stories on videos. And it, uh, and it, was, uh, it was so moving. We, 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 we strung a narrative around it, and we had some, you know, some jokes and some songs and some shtick like we usually do. But, but uh, what did you think of all those stories, Chris? And thanks for getting out of bed as well, by the way. Uh, I did get out of bed, um, and I was there. Uh, so I've actually been making a point of making sure that I made it to the pre-note for uh, the last few DrupalCons here. 
Um, but I thought it was really good. Um, and I really liked just kind of the, the personal touch of it. I mean, you know, you and Robert always have a lot of fun, and I always think it's really great. But, like, this pre-note I, I felt like was kind of um, set apart from the rest to a certain degree because I felt like it really tapped into the vibe of the people who were at DrupalCon. Um, and I really liked that aspect of it. Uh, one of the things that I thought was really, really interesting about it was just the uh, number of, uh, um, you know, really close personal relationships, whether they were uh, people who had become couples or people who were vowing to never become couples uh, up on stage. Um, and, you know, even long lost family members. I just thought it was really, really interesting to see um, to see those sorts of like close knit relationships that um, people have either developed or found uh, during their DrupalCon experiences, uh, and I thought it was really cool to get to share that with the rest of the community. Yeah, and there were actually there were some really, really personal stories, right? And along alongside um, Dries telling us how Aquia got started and Angie's first event and um, Crazy funny things like uh, how the German Drupal shop Und Paul uh, got their name because Robert Douglas um, was unable to hear or pronounce the difference between the German names Stefan and Stefan. They told him that those two guys were called Günther und Paul, and so now the shop's called Und Paul. I think that's I think it's absolutely hilarious. I will post links to everything we're talking about uh, in this video and in the show notes that we published on Acquia.com. So um, talk about your session, Chris. There's this, there's this big uh, thing going on that a lot of people call the PHP renaissance. You know, the PHP communities are waking up, and there's all this stuff happening that means that um, projects that used to sort of not like each other and never talk with each other or just be so weird that nobody could deal with them, like <clears throat> Drupal, right? Um, all of a sudden, we're talking, we're exchanging ideas, we're exchanging code, thanks to stuff like the, um, the Composer, thanks to the PSR standards. Um, and, and your talk really taps into a time when maybe it's going to be harder to say what is Drupal and what's not, right? Right. Yeah. So, like the whole notion of that that talk, I'm actually um, I'm going to give the talk again at Bad Camp, and I've retitled it uh, because like the talk is really Drupal in a post PHP Renaissance world. Like that's what the talk's really about. Um, and you know, uh, I I ask a lot of what I hope are kind of leading questions with regard to what's Drupal future. Um, where are we really going? How are we going to get there? What's the timetable for doing that? Uh, you know, is there is there an expiration date on Drupal to a certain degree if we don't do it? Uh, you know, I think that there are some really, really important questions that uh, come out of this. And so, you know, I, I spent quite a bit of time doing research over the course of, well, basically the entire Drupal 8 cycle because so much of Drupal 8 has been uh, tapping into a lot of this. Uh, and so, you know, to me, it was really important to communicate what I was seeing and how I felt uh, things were rapidly changing uh, within the Drupal environment uh, and just kind of point the way towards what I thought Drupal 9 specifically might look like. I don't think uh, we're likely to reorganize uh, any, any of the, you know, major releases of Drupal 8 going forward into something that that matches my description more. But hopefully, you know, when we do uh, a big like super major release going forward uh, that, you know, we can seriously consider this. But, you know, the topic was really about um, like Drupal over the course of the last 14 years uh, has done an awful lot of really cool things and modules were actually introduced back in, uh, back in the early 3X timeframe and, you know, I went over what that was, what the current standard looks like today, and then I started breaking it down and comparing it to Composer and how they do things and just really trying to show that, like, for the last 14 years, to a certain degree, we've been ahead of the PHP world in terms of how we allowed people to interact with our system. And now PHP is totally caught up with regard to, you know, their namespaces and Composer coming into the world and everything that's happening there and how, you know, if we'll adopt that, we might find our find ourselves in a world where 
you know, our modules could be used outside of Drupal. Um, and I think that that's a really, really interesting topic because it certainly does beg the question, like, what's Drupal at that point? Yeah. Uh, and 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 when when do you write a mo a Drupal module and when do you write a PHP library for everybody, right? Right. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I actually stood on stage and said, "Hey, uh, if you're working in in Drupal eight, you know, I think that you should be writing for Drupal second. I think you should write a, a PHP library that everyone can use, and then if necessary, you know, write the Drupal module that adapts that code into Drupal." Mm -hmm. That's a that's a very interesting idea. So. Um, I want to catch your session at Badcamp then. Uh, like, I want to see, I want to hear the, the latest version of this. I'll bring my video camera in case they don't have that set up at Badcamp. I don't know if they're taping all the sessions this year or not, but um, I'll record that and we'll make sure that we get that online too. Um, I think this touches a tiny, tiny bit, and I don't want to go into super detail here because we've got uh, eight more sessions to talk about, but um, this also touches on my idea that the most so I talk with a lot of people and and I do I get to do a lot of these uh, have a lot of these conversations with smart people uh, in and around Drupal and often when I ask what's your favorite thing about Drupal maybe two thirds or seventy five percent of people say the community right so hands down the community is the most popular feature of Drupal and in a world when the boundaries of Drupal are going to become a little bit amorphous I would like to have our community actively think and act in a way to preserve this group of people who like to do fun, hard stuff together and, and change the world together and um, create or, or encourage a sense of cohesion that is not tied to the code, but it's, it's, it's tied to these people who are making this code. Um, and I think that that's also a, a sustainable and, and, and exportable um, culture as well that maybe we can we can you know bring to the broader PHP world somehow so anyway that's also uh, sort of going on in my mind while you're talking about the, the technical side of that yeah well and I think you're totally right because you know like I said if if PHP is moving in such a direction that as Drupal embraces more and more of what PHP is doing you know it really does ask a question like what is Drupal then then I think the answer to that question is that Drupal's a community right? Like, that's what I really honestly think the answer has to become. And, hmm. you know, it, while that doesn't mean that there's not, like, an agreed-upon code base that the Drupal community uses, you know, the primary feature of Drupal uh, actually becomes the community at that point. All right. I'd like to explore that idea some more with you, so we'll keep it in mind. Cool. <clears throat> Moving right along, because we have at least a couple more sessions that are um, controversial enough to, to, to merit actual discussion. Um, so shout out to the coder versus themer smackdown session. This uh, is done by my office mates from Cologne, Adam Duran and Campbell Vertese. Um, if you haven't seen them do this live, I've seen them do it um, and uh, uh, I, I saw them do it a few months ago and they're constantly updating it. But the thing is, uh, hilarious and very educational and th there's a very very good set of points to be made around um, how organizations that produce Drupal websites specifically um, how they can work how they should work how they shouldn't work so really really super briefly Adam Duran is a great themer and Campbell Vertesi is a really great coder and they take a fictitious Website project spec. It's very simple, you know, a menu that does this and a and a and a contact block that looks like that. And, you know, just some a wireframe and and some very basic functionality. And they each have 15 minutes to produce a site that matches that spec. But the coder is only allowed to work in the theme layer, and the themer is only allowed to work in actual Drupal code, right? <laughs> and and um, when I saw them do it, at some point, the only way that Adam um, could solve a problem was using display none in CSS. And then all the coders in the audience were like, boo, you're cheating, boo. And, but, and you know, everybody got really excited, and they were yelling. Um, and by the way, they do it in their martial arts uniform. <laughs> so 
so so this spectacle of Drupal geekiness, just this part is is hilarious, and it's it's so it makes coding really exciting to watch, to be honest. That's um, funny. And then, but the moral of the thing is they come together and they discuss a little bit about what their solutions were, and they talk about teamwork. They talk about how um, coders and themers can't work in isolation from each other and how they have to cooperate and you have to have proper planning and you have to have proper um you know project management agile however you want to work so that the work gets divided properly and there are also very very many ways to skin these complex cats that we build so um you know you, you, communication and cooperation is 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 essential anyway it's absolutely brilliant i highly recommend seeing it in person especially uh this video only has the screen not their sort of shtick that they do in person but um it's cool to watch the coding part so i highly recommend this let's jump to chris let's talk about morton's twig in d8 session and don't forget eclipse gc the north never forgets right um well so so i didn't get to attend this session but i watched it uh online later uh because i really you know i was there kind of when the whole twig thing started happening and i have always really supported this and i wanted to see you know where it was landing today and so um i think this is actually a really uh, interesting counterpoint to the whole coder versus themer conversation because Morton essentially got up on stage and he showed a number of really significant Drupal 8 improvements and how he could all by himself without having to mess with anything that wasn't just straight up twig, uh, restyle a site however he pleased. Uh, and you know the, the work that he did there I thought was really, really great. Um, but some of the most mind-blowing things that were going on uh, in that particular uh, session were the debugging things that are capable in Twig now. And, oh, yes. Yeah. Wow, that blew my mind. Right. And so, you know, for those of you who haven't seen the session, go watch it. But, you know, the, the, the basic uh, punchline to the whole thing is that after Morton turned on the Twig debugging, uh, he could look at the actual output from Drupal, like the HTML output, and for any any code anywhere had comment wrappers around it that showed you exactly which Twig file was rendering this and what the various Drupal supported suggestions were that you could use uh, in order to get greater specificity uh, on that particular component. Uh, so, you know, at the end of the day, you could say, okay, well, this piece of HTML is being output by this twig uh, file. I can go and copy that into my theme. I can name it one of these suggestions uh, to make it more specific if I need. And then I can customize this twig however I please. And, and without without hacking or, or, or um, you know, removing the upgradability of any other code. Yeah. Yeah, and it was it was great. It was a great session. You know, Morton did a bunch of things on stage uh, that haven't been particularly feasible uh, up until Drupal eight. Uh, so you know, he did he did like some menu restyling and things like that that were just like much more difficult pre Drupal eight. Uh, and I thought it was a really impressive session. It was very well laid out. Um, even though he called me out personally in it. Uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't hold a grudge. The North may never forget, but I don't hold a grudge. Uh, he did so, <laughs> That's true. And he told me he was going to do it. So, you know, I had fair warning. Uh, but yeah, no, it was a really great session. If you haven't seen it, uh, even if you're not uh, a front ender, I think that uh, understanding what Twig is buying us today in Drupal 8 is probably well worth your while. So definitely go and watch it. Right. And to be honest, Twig is 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 real code it's got actual logic and it's really really important um stuff i think as much as everybody's excited about decoupled having twig in drupal gives us an amazing uh state of the art very very powerful safe and secure theming layer so we shouldn't ignore it and and i completely agree that everybody needs to go see this session <laughs> <laughs>